Today we're going to be turning this amazing pork shoulder into one of my all-time favourites, the pork pie. So we have to start by making the suet pastry. It's basically a hot water pastry that when baked goes crispy on the outside but still has that slight softness on the inside. So into a pan, put 150 grams of butter and 150 grams of pork lard. Put it onto a low heat and let it melt. Then into a bowl, put 400 grams of plain flour and give it a good pinch of salt. Then once the butter and lard is melted, pour it straight over the flour and mix together with a spoon or a spatula. Keep mixing until all the flour has been incorporated by the liquid and so that it's cool enough to actually pour out onto the surface and use your hands. And we're just going to knead this together for a couple of minutes just to get it nice and smooth. You don't want to overwork the flour because we don't want to develop any gluten. So when you get it nice and smooth, just form it into a disc. Make sure you cover it all the way around in plastic and just let it sit at room temperature just to relax. Stick Netflix on or something, you know, if you're feeling generous. But while that's relaxing, we're going to make the gelatin stock that we're going to use as the jelly in the pot pie. So get yourself two pig trotters. You can get these at the butchers. They cost pretty much next to nothing. Stick them in a pan and then cover them with water. Again, add a good pinch of salt, some black peppercorns, a couple of bay leaves, and we're going to bring this up to a boil really fast and then reduce the heat to a nice simmer. Once this has been cooking for about half an hour, you'll start to see a lot of the impurities coming to the top. You just want to skim them off with a ladle. So while that's simmering away in the back, we're going to start on the pork shoulder. And this is seriously a beautiful pork shoulder, straight from the local butchers. So unroll it and lay it fat side down. We're literally just going to cut off the meat from the inside. That's the only part we're going to use, but we're not going to waste this fat because it's absolutely incredible. Just score with a knife all the way on the outside of the fat and then spin it round and score the other way. So you've got these kind of nice diamonds and then covered generously in mold and sea salt, making sure to get into all them cracks. The salt really helps to dry it out and make it nice and crispy. We're going to turn this into the most amazing pork crackling. So once it's generously salted, stick it in a baking tray, give it a touch of cracked black pepper over the top and stick it in the oven at 220 degrees for about 25 to 35 minutes. For the rest of the shoulder, you want to slice it into thin slices, then spin it round and dice it up. You want them all to be fairly evenly sized. Don't worry about having a little bit of fat in the mixture, this will all add to the flavour. But if you find any sinewy bits, like stringy white bits, you want to be cutting them out really. They're not going to cook very well and you don't want to be chewing into that later. So just take your time to pick through the pork. Then into the pork, we're going to pick off a little bit of thyme, just removing the leaves from the stem, and then just run it through roughly with the knife. Then hit it with a good amount of cracked black pepper, generously seasoned with salt and that's it nothing more you want the pork to stand for itself so give it a good mix and leave it to the side while we roll out the pastry so now with the pastry is all rested up flour your work surface and your rolling pin and we're going to roll out the pastry till about half a centimetre thick make sure to dust with plenty of flour because it does get quite sticky find yourself some sort of circular disc or cookie cutter you want it to be quite a lot bigger than the actual ramekin you're going to use because it needs to go all the way up the sides as well but just use the size of the ramekin to cut out the lid then just very gently push the pastry into the ramekin, making sure it's flat up against the side so we get a nice evenly shaped pie. Take your time with this because the pastry is quite delicate and can rip very easily. But make sure you have enough pastry just sticking over the edge as well so we can fasten the lid. And then make yourself a nice ball of the pork shoulder mix and place it straight into the middle. Don't overfill it because you're going to have to put a lid on this thing. So just make sure you're sealing all the way around the outside of the lid, pushing together because you don't want it coming apart. In the middle, you want to make a little hole. This is going to do two things. This is going to help the steam release so that you don't get a soggy pie. And we're also going to use this to inject the gelatin mixture later on. Then you can tip it out, lay them all on a baking tray, and then beat one whole egg with a touch of water and completely cover them in the egg wash. Making sure to lift them up and get all the way around the outside so they get a nice even browning. And then into the oven at 160 degrees for about an hour and 15 to hour and 20 minutes or until they're beautifully golden brown. But while they're in the oven, out comes our crispy crackling. And just look at that. Absolutely incredible. And now onto our gelatin stock. It's been simmering away for about an hour and a half now, getting stronger and stronger with all them beautiful flavors. So strain it through a sieve. And then while it's hot, we're gonna actually add one packet of powdered gelatin, just to make this mixture really stable when it cools. So just give that a good whisk in, Make sure it's completely dissolved and then just leave it to the side to cool down to room temperature. And now to remove our pies and just look how unique they are. That's one of the best things about homemade pies is that they all look different. They all have their own unique personality. But once they've cooled down a little bit, we're going to get ourselves a syringe and we're literally just going to inject each pie with the beautiful gelatin mixture. Stick it straight in the hole in the top and you'll be surprised how much the pie actually takes. I had to do it at least four times with each pie. But you'll know when they're full, when they start to bubble on the top and also you might get a little seepage coming out the bottom. Transfer them to a plate and then leave them in the fridge overnight. Don't be tempted to get into them now because they are so much better the next day. And look at that, pot pies are made to be eaten cold. 
Are you ready for the beautiful cross section? Just look at that. You can see the beautiful jelly preserving the meat in the center. The pastry that's crisp on the outside but soft on the inside. This might be weird to some people having a cold pie, but it's literally a British classic and it's one of my all time favorite things. And this, no joke, was the best pork pie I have ever eaten. Seriously, it was amazing. I couldn't even contain myself. It was so, so good. They didn't last long, I'll tell you that. But please, if you like this video, support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, and remember to just keep cooking.